Okay, so now we have crossing over that results in diversity. We have independent assortment that results in diversity. And then think about the fact that even if we didn't cross over and we had 8 million possible eggs that I could make, and the fellas have 8 million possible sperm that they could make, not only do we have all of that diversity, we then have randomly, you are going to get different kids depending on which gametes get fertilized by whom. So check it out. If you have this little, this sperm was the lucky sperm that made it to this egg, you're going to end up with a fertilized zygote that has genetics that look like this. If you randomly pick a different set of eggs and sperm. Check that out. We're going to end up with different zygotes. Here are all my possible zygotes from just four possible sperm and four possible eggs. It, it really is kind of mind-boggling. That's it. Actually, it's, I mean, it's super mind-boggling, but it's pretty straightforward. And Random fertilization isn't a process of meiosis. Meiosis produces the gametes that then random fertilization is going to produce the genetic diversity, which hopefully you're like, why do we care? We'll have a fatty explanation of that, why we care about genetic diversity when we get to the last lecture in this series, which is on sexual reproduction. Oh, and parasites. That's why we care about genetic diversity. Trust me. All right, let's do an animation walkthrough of the process of meiosis just to remind ourselves where we are. Now you know why we do it so that we can generate genetic diversity and have the right amount of DNA. Review. 